Harrington, the piano man. <laughs> um, Paul, you, you were very much established as, uh, as the piano man in Dublin, and you have you established a piano bar in Lily Bordello's, the Royal Dublin Hotel. Yeah. That saw, was, that was, you played with some serious celebrities. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, that, that, was, that was the source of entertainment, you know, you know, 20 years ago in Dublin, and, and great entertainment and places to go to. Also, of course, being, being Irish, you know, you always had people looking for a late night drink, you know. So there was one or two of those places where you could go for a jar, have a, maybe a bite to eat and, uh, you know, be entertained. And I suppose that's, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, I was chiseled into the piano man from, from doing that over the years. Um, and then I pulled away from it for, uh, for, for, for a time when I wanted to become an established uh, recording artist, um, which, was, which was great. I, I, you know, I, I had a couple of hit records over the years and um, I suppose I started to develop a name for myself in Ireland. Um, and then, of course, during uh, Eurovision 1994, that exploded for me then because then I became a household name, which is a, which is a, well, it's a, it is a blessing. Let's let's call it a blessing. And uh, then I went back to doing the piano thing again uh, with with a very different set of tools and and, and a different kind of experience, uh, uh, you know, life experience. And I went back to a place called Lily's Bordello to play in their private VIP room. Uh, and entertain, you know, uh, all of the celebrities that used to pass through Dublin. And you know, you know, wh when I say I, I established re relationships with a, a lot of these people, you do on a night, on an evening, because you're part of their their evening. You're part of their uh, their whole entertainment. And you know, I had some great fun with with you know various actors and uh, obviously the Rolling Stones, huge. Prince, he wasn't exactly a bundle of laughs, but uh, you know, he he uh, he stayed longer than than, than he was he, than he than he normally does, and uh, we'd have, we'd have you know a couple of hours entertaining with him. Lots of actors, um, you know, passed through my hands there. You know, and Irish footballers. You know, we, we you know it was you could it was a place where you could have Johnny Giles singing "Don't Cry for Me, Argentina," you know, followed by John Hurt reciting a poem. Or you know, or Moby getting up and playing the piano, playing something a bit out there, you know. Uh, so it really was a fantastic, again, a fantastic experience. And and I suppose what you're supposed to do and try to do is bring all of these experiences with you. And uh, you know, thank God I'm still alive and well and fit enough to be to be entertaining people today. And I try and bring all of that to the table as well, all that experience to 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 whether it's a gig or. or wedding or, or a corporate evening, whatever it might be, you know, I really try and be part of the evening, be involved on a personal level. All right, we're going to have some uh, music now. My next guest is one of the best voices in the business, along with Charlie McGetting. He actually won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1994. Also formed a relationship with Michael Flatley, which has seen him travel the world as part of the Celtic Tiger Tour. Now, he's currently back home and about to release a collection of his material from the past 20 years, which have included favourites like Rock and Roll Kids, Carrick Fergus, and the song he's going to do tonight. With what I'd say, will you welcome, please, an old friend, Mr. Paul Harrington. How's it going? This might be what I'd say. You broke my heart, you know. Oh, it looks like a rain today. Oh, maybe, God, I missed you since you Well, or go to hell might be what I'd say. As a recording artist, Paul, um, you've had a couple of albums, you've been in the Irish Hit Parade, but mm. Brendan Graham, I suppose, who we'd know for writing the great song You Raise Me Up. The, probably the most covered uh, song on the planet. Yeah. He heard something in your voice and said, uh, he, he, he thought you could go forward for the Eurovision for Ireland. Yeah, well, with that song, Rock and Roll Kids, as you just heard, he wrote, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he obviously did hear something because at that time, Brendan was, was uh, very much, I suppose, a fledgling songwriter. and um, he, But a, a determined man, a focused man, absolutely knowing what he wants and um, he did. He, I had had a hit um, album out at the time 
um, and he he tracked me down and asked me to record a couple of his songs, uh, which one of them is Rock and Roll Kids. And I suppose maybe, yeah, he must have seen something or heard something because we went on to record it, we went on to, to uh, present it in the National Song Contest, it won that, and we went to Eurovision and we went on to win that as well. Three in a row for Ireland. I remember 62 I was 16 and so were you And we lived next door On the avenue Jerry Lee was big and Elvis too Blue jeans and blue suede shoes And we never knew What life held in store we just wanted to rock and roll forevermore We were the rock and roll kids the Rock and roll was all we did And listening to those songs on the radio I was yours and you were mine But that was once now we never seem to rock and roll anymore Now Johnny's in love with the girl next door Mary's down at the record store They don't want to be around us no more Golden oldies but we hardly speak too busy running to a different beat Hard to understand We were once like that How I wish we could find those rock and roll days again We were the rock and roll kids And rock and roll was all we did And listening to those songs on the radio I was yours and you were mine But that was once a part of time Now we never seem to rock and roll anymore I was yours and you were mine but that was once a part of time now we never seem to rock and roll We just never seem to rock and roll night for Ireland Paul, mm. because you did as you say there got the three in a row Riverdance was part of that night Michael flatly exploded onto the scene mm. you became good friends and subsequently toured him yeah we did um, I, I you know the truth of the matter is we did become kind of uh, pals uh, at the time and of course you know the Riverdance became a huge success uh, Michael had his, his difficulties with that and then went on to establish Lord of the Dance um, and came back with an amazing show and I suppose he did go into a different realm for, for 10 years but uh, you know it all came back round again um, and I, occasionally I would play at parties in his home and, and we established, we re-established our relationship and I went on to perform in a show called The Celtic Tiger with with uh, with Michael, uh, I was the principal singer, and we we toured the world with that. It was amazing, you know, to to play wonderful wonderful venues like Wembley Arena and uh, Convention Centre in Hong Kong. 
you know, Olympic Stadium in Budapest to, to like 60 or 70 thousand people. I mean, just immense, you know, and uh, of course, Madison Square Garden, of course, how could I forget? I mean, that was the highlight of my, of my uh, uh, musical performance careers. I, 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 either that or the Eurovision, one or the other. <laughs> Paul, just recently you have, you've had a song, an album called Songs, mm. and you've co covered some great artists on that. Lionel Richie? Yeah, well, easy, easy like Sunday morning uh, is 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 my favorite song of all time. You know, and you know, it's, see see this thing here when this happens. I just get shivers down my spine, and you know, it's I establish it as my favorite song of all time because every time I hear it, it immediately transports me right back to when I first heard it. And I also feel exactly how I felt the first time I heard it. Just something in it that I absolutely adore. And it was great, to ha I suppose, to have reached a point in my career where I had the confidence to record and cover a song like that. I know it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. You see, I beg, stole, and I borrowed. Yeah, Ooh. it's why I'm easy. And the songs album, as you say, is very much uh, covers album, very much uh, set out to capture what I do, uh, you know, live. Uh, Oh, and with the musicians that I play uh, my live gigs with Bill Shanley, Sean Devitt on drums and uh, Tony Malloy on bass and we did it in this studio here at the Cauldron um, and we did it practically off the floor with this piano we, you know, I, I sang and played at the same time which was I suppose unheard of in, in recording uh, circles because you know, you're supposed to do everything separately. But um, Chris O'Brien, Graham Murphy, they were the producers of the album. This was their vision, and uh, they really, really did capture something uh, that I'd be, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of. Sure. Well, my next guest though is also a member of that select club of singers who have won the Eurovision. In addition to this, he's a radio and television personality who has toured the world as principal vocalist with Michael Flatley's show, Celtic Tiger. He has also spent a lot of time doing live shows throughout Ireland, and it is from these shows that he's chosen the songs for his new album, which is simply called Songs. From that, he's going to sing the Chris Rea classic, Fool. If you think it's over, you'll enjoy this. It's really lovely. It's Paul Harrington. Fool, if you think it's over Because he said goodbye Over, I tell you why. Well, there's a t Tom Waits song, uh, Old 55. There's definitely uh, I Can't Make You Love Me. I know that's I, I, I can never remember who wrote that. I always, I always associate it with uh, Bonnie Raitt, but I'm not, I'm not sure if you're anyway. There, there are some fantastic songs in it. Mm -hmm. Skies of Lebanon are burning Those mighty cedars bleeding in the heat They're showing pictures on the television Women and children dying in the street And we're still at it in our own the circuit now is a corporate circuit. It's mm. it's a wedding circuit. They're important. It's important work, and and how you're a conduit of an evening. That's what I've observed from you, as I know you a long time. Mm. You, you'd certainly bring people together in a room through your music and through your voice. Remember when all of the days were long, and we rolled beneath the deep blue sky. I didn't have a care in the world With mommy and daddy standing by While happily ever after fades Well, it's, and it's a, it's, I, I take it as a, as a compliment as well, it's, uh, but I suppose that is true um, because um, you have to 
Well, you, you know, you're going to be part of a very big event for somebody, so therefore you really have to have to um, become part of it. Um, you have to develop very quickly a trust between them and you, uh, and you know you have to assure them that look, I'm going to make this night go well for you. Your, you know, your people are going to be entertained. They're going to walk away with a smile on their face, and and uh, they're going to have had a good time. And I suppose I have to very very quickly develop a rapport between me and the audience for uh, and and uh, gain their confidence and uh, make them feel you know that they're having a great night and, and and sometimes that might even involve in letting one or two of them up to sing a song with me but you know it, these are the things you have to do and I do enjoy it you know I really really enjoy it because it's it's uh, that is the challenge and I suppose you refer to it as a gift I, I would refer to it as a, I suppose a skill that I've had to develop over the years you know but I'm lucky I, I, you know I'm lucky in that sense that I I have a good um, I have a good instinct for people Piano Man, the singer of songs, play us out with a song and thanks for taking the time to uh, to talk to us. Oh, you're very welcome, thank you. Talk about trying to, trying, trying to catch me out. Um, uh, we'll do this for Brendan Graham. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on Could have done with that one. <laughs>